In this video, I'll show you how to express two sine waves as a single wave. This is part one. The question reads, express y is equal to 2.00 sine omega t plus 3.00 sine omega t plus 60 degrees as a single sine wave. This symbol right here, which represents the angular velocity, is the same in both of these terms. To add two sine waves of the same frequency, notice that they have the same frequency, we simply find the resultant of the phasars, which are the amplitudes, two and the three, representing those two waves. Now here's what I mean. What I first wanna do is rewrite this function so that it's in a notation we understand. What we have is y is equal to 2.00 at an angle of zero. Notice that this doesn't have a phase angle, so it's at an angle of zero plus 3.00 at an angle of 60. And the way I'll treat this is I'll treat this as the magnitude of a vector and this as its angle. So we'll be adding these two vectors together. To do that, we will create a mini plane here. And I will use a straight line to represent the first sine wave. So this arrow right here represents 2.0. Zero. zero, and if you can't see it, I'll highlight it for you. And I'll use another vector to represent the second sine wave. So that is at an angle of 60, and it has a magnitude of 3.00. I have to add these two vectors together. I'll use the tail to tip method. So I'll take this vector and bring it up here. And I'll also take this vector and put it over here. If this is at an angle of 60, so is this one. And as a result, I can find out the angle here, which is 120. This is called supplementary angles. 120 plus 60 gives us 180. Now, if you extend an arrow from the origin to where the two vectors meet, you'll end up with the resultant vector, shown in red. And by doing that, you create a triangle, which can be solved. And we can use that triangle to find the angle of our resultant vector, this one. What we can use is the cosine law. And with the cosine law, you can only use it when you have side angle side or side side side. In our case, we have side angle side, so it can be used. I'm going to call this vertex C and this length, which will serve as my resultant magnitude, little c, this will be called big B, big A, little a and little b. The cosine law looks like this. Now I'll substitute everything that I know, substituting these values in, 3.00 to the power of 2 plus 2.00 to the power of 2 minus 2 times 3, 2, and cosine of 120. I'll evaluate everything on the right side with my calculator and then square root because c is squared. Using my calculator, 3 to the power of 2, and notice that I'm not adding the decimal 0, 0. There's no need for that with this calculation. 3 times 2 times cosine 120. And before you press equals, make sure your calculator is not in radians. Make sure it's in degrees. I can do that right now. My calculator is now in degrees and I end up with 19. I'll square root this number, because that's the last step, and I end up with 4.358. 4.358, that is equal to my C. Now since I started off with two approximate numbers, these two are approximate numbers, that's an exact number, and they both have three significant figures, I should also end up with an answer with three significant figures. Since this eight is the first to go, that five goes up, to 4.36, eight is greater than five, so we round upwards. That is the magnitude of the resultant vector. We still need to find its angle. Now unfortunately, the cosine law does not help us with that. We would have to use the sine law, which looks like this, to find that angle. So how do we use the sine law? We have a completed angle to side, big C and little c, and we're looking for this angle, and we have little a. So let's use the formula with c and little c. 
little c, which we just found to be 4.36, and the angle was sine of 120 degrees. The angle a is what we're looking for, and we know little a is 3.0. Using our calculator once more, multiplying 3.00 times sine of 120, multiplying 4.36 times sine a, which gives us 4.36 sine a, dividing both sides by 4.36, gives us the following ratio, so sine a is equal to, and I'll take four decimal places just to be accurate. Now, I'll sine inverse both sides, sine inverse, where I end up with 36.57, 36.57, Taking into account three significant figures, I can stop at 36.5, and 7 is greater than 5, so we end up with 36.6. So our final sine wave will look like this, where y is equal to my amplitude of 4.36 sine with an angular velocity or frequency, the same as we had originally, plus 36.6 degrees. That right there is the function written as a single sine wave. And so there you have it. That is how to express two sine waves as a single sine wave. Make sure to watch part two where we combine a sine wave and a cosine wave together.